My name is Jonas Sundqvist, and I am the group leader of uh, High K Devices, where we do all the ALD work at Fraunhofer CNT in Dresden, Germany. Fraunhofer CNT was founded in 2005 by Infineon and AMD in Dresden as a joint uh, research lab for new 3 nanometer technologies. A big part of that was atomic layer deposition for AMD and Infineon. Infineon later became Kimonda. Kimonda went uh, bankrupt in 2009, but we continued work. And AMD was transformed to Global Founders, and today Global Founders is our biggest uh, industrial partner in Dresden, and we develop AMD processes for them and other industries in Europe. So we have a um, clean room, 800 square meters, about uh, 40 300 millimeter uh, tools, different types, including the prologue. Uh, a big part of that is ALD. We have in total uh, four ALD platforms and um, seven chambers. So we have uh, ALD from uh, single wafer from ASM, the classical Pulsar 3000 reactor. Uh, we have ASM large batch for metal nitrides. Uh, we have USM cluster for high K development, and we have a uh, cluster built by ourselves uh, together with a local company, uh, FHR, here in outside Dresden for 300 meter process development. So that uh, sums up our ALD capabilities here in the lab. And then we have close collaboration with the other labs in Dresden. So the Technical University of Dresden has a big ALD group at the uh, Institute of, for um, uh, Semiconductor Microelectronics, and they have um, uh, um, tools from different suppliers, including BEMEC, FHR, home build tools. Uh, another collaboration we have is with NAMLAB. It's also part of the university, and uh, there they develop uh, ALD on uh, Oxford Instruments uh, uh, reactors, and uh, our modern institute, uh, where we now belong to IPMS, also have ALD equipment, and they are currently, together with us, developing high K for um, capacitors using PicoSun equipment. And there's some more tools around there. So, front of the Comed in Dresden has, uh, for instance, Benek tools. And then our friends in Chemnitz, close to Dresden, front of Enas, who has a uh, cluster from Rotenklau. So uh, we uh, have a lot of different suppliers here in Dresden. We're not focused on one single supplier. And um, we have yeah, suppliers from Europe, from uh, Finland especially in this case, and uh, also from Korea to use some tools. Huh? And this lab, um, from of CMT, uh, has three major parts. So it's uh, patterning, e-beam lithography, uh, and edge, um, backend uh, interconnect, uh, copper backend metallization, and uh, a high K device group, which then include uh, most of the AMD activities. Supporting to this, we have the uh, analytics group, specially focused on uh, atom probe uh, tomography. So my, our main focus at the moment is the 28 nanometer technology uh, running at uh, Global Founders Fab 1 in Dresden and at other fabs. And we are developing uh, high K um, in front end, so high performance transistors, uh, tuning the met, uh, high K metal gate stack uh, together with uh, Global Founders for increased reliability. We have uh, ALD topics in metallization, so uh, nickel uh, source strain contacts. Uh, we work on devices in uh, front, uh, memory devices in front end and back end. We have especially uh, development for ferroelectric memories that we can integrate either in the front end in the transistor by uh, adjusting the hafnium oxide uh, by doping that it becomes a ferroelectric device. And in back end, we can do the same in a capacitor setup. Um, that we get a ferroelectric uh, RAM memory. So, with respect to um, ALD, uh, one of our ma uh, major achievements was the development of uh, zirconium precursors for uh, DRAM capacitors. 
So we have to get with, uh, in close collaboration with early KIT and University of Helsinki, um, uh, Mikko Ritala's uh, uh, group, develop new zirconium precursors that are today used in production all over the world for uh, the young capacity. And especially uh, the winner of all this event most was the well-known Sial precursor from early KIT. So um, we were very much involved into that work, and uh, especially for the scale-up process for 300 mm here in Dresden. And uh, other things that we did, uh, we did the capacitor module for Kimondi in uh, front of the CNT, the first early development for the stack capacitor. We uh, had the global founders introduce ALD in production for uh, 32 and 28 nanometer, replacing uh, other options uh, with MOCVD. And uh, recently, our best success is the ferroelectric Huffman oxide that we uh, are currently integrating into 28 nanometer uh, structures, and we're working on increasing the endurance uh, in this field. Our lab, ALD Lab Dresden, uh, our partners at the university, we interact uh, directly with uh, precursor companies. So chemical companies, big uh, global suppliers of chemistries. We have uh, had precursors from uh, most of the big companies here. Uh, we have worked on small sample size. We have scaled it up to 300 meter. Uh, we have scaled it up using bulk refill system all the way to production. So that's really uh, our advantage here for chemical uh, suppliers. They can uh, start with small sample size, a couple of grams, and move up to a kilo level supply on uh, production equipment. Taking part in the major conferences, we always send uh, some guys to the LD conferences, the Baltic LD and so on. Uh, I don't do too much conferences, but instead I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn, managing the LinkedIn forum and uh, trying to uh, promote discussions uh, in AD fields and spreading news about uh, AD. The AD group on LinkedIn, um, what I thought was missing was a forum where we could discuss uh, AD topics. There was no forum and uh, I I checked out LinkedIn in the beginning and so, so for other topical forums and uh, thought, why not? I need to somehow sort my all my LD contacts. So I checked my Outlook address book and uh, spammed everybody I knew and invited them to join the group. And it worked out. I got quite fast, 100 members, and it was growing, but not so, so fast. So I later hooked up with uh, um, Rob at Tokyo Electron, who visited the uh, AD conference, and, and somehow he got hold of the whole list of participants to the AD conference in 2009. And that's when we did our jointly spammed everybody to join the group. And since then, it has been growing by this itself, basically, without invitations. So it grows by people join, and other people see that it joins, and it's it's pretty active, we have 2,000 members today, and it's growing just by itself, by 10, 15 members every week. So, uh, yeah, I watch uh, the growth of the LD community every day. So, uh, uh, I usually, uh, everybody who, who applies to the uh, LD LinkedIn group, I do some stalking on their uh, profiles, look what type of persons they are, background, and there I have noticed uh, the last uh, one, two years, there's a lot of new young people from uh, not from the typical uh, LD countries uh, joining the forum. For sure, the biggest uh, contribution is from US in this group, but it has to do with that LinkedIn is a US uh, based uh, forum and much more popular in US than elsewhere. And number two, tada, Finland <laughs> has the um, second um, uh, is number two holds place number two in the LinkedIn group. And but um, there's also new countries coming that you have not seen uh, uh, doing too much AD before. And there's a lot of young people, and there's also a lot of young people joining for sure. Also in Finland and US and. I think uh, the the old guys are in there since the beginning, and uh, it's 
I, uh, I, I will calculate the average age if, well, I would do if I would have the age information <laughs> through LinkedIn, but they don't give that out. But uh, other geographical location you can look at and uh, update this on a regular basis. So, uh, Dresden is number four. I'm trying to promote more Dresden people to come, but uh, they, they are not so interested in LinkedIn. Yeah. Our lab, we want to go more into uh, um, plasma ALD. So we have started, uh, we are developing our own 300 plasma chamber. Um, and we think we would, uh, will invest in plasma ALD in the future to uh, offer that to our existing customer and also to find new customers and for new applications. Um, so that would be a major uh, direction to go. So uh, moving more into metal ALD and also moving into more uh, um, applications in backend. So we have uh, had a strong focus in front end and I think we will do more AD and backend in the future. So uh, AD, uh, it will continue to grow into new application areas. So uh, there has been sort of different uh, boom periods for AD. So, Earlier 2000 to 2005 uh, or so, it started the boom in the semiconductor industry, and uh, we have now yet another boom in the uh, photovoltaic industry. And I expect there will boom a lot uh, in the future in different areas, going into medical uh, applications, energy harvesting application, maybe uh, lithium uh, batteries, uh, other areas of 3D, maybe also into uh, telecommunications and uh, uh, automotive industry. So uh, I don't think we have seen uh, even close to see uh, any stagnation in the field of LT. It will keep on booming and we know it's growing like 30% every year on an annual basis and uh, so as long as the industry doesn't die and it's not too much focused on only one industry like it's been up to Recently, when it had a very strong semiconductor focus, but uh, now it's broadening up, and I think it will be a stable growth due to this broadening for many years to come.